Yeah. Well, we're not out of building. We're in, in a boat slip right here. Where you at? Yeah. <laughs> we can't run. Right? <laughs> Close in it. <gasps> Look, we finally got the washer nice. dryer combo completely installed. It's up and running. Oh, no, it's a dry. Splendide oh, XC2100 oh, and it works like a charm. It has three dry cycles and a bunch of wash cycles. You can wash dry together in the same cycle or you can just wash something and hang it out to dry or you can just dry something. I love it. Uh, we're doing railing modifications. Uh, we're gonna modify midship railings and we're gonna modify after railings. Include fabricating special bracket for uh, dive tank bracket. Uh, include uh, new life raft cradle and also we're gonna move engine rest engine uh, mounting plate to the starboard side. So make sure everything will fit. So by the time we finish, you're probably gonna recommend us to all your friends. Absolutely. <laughs> Commercial is over, right? That's right. Thank you. So down here in Florida, working with with YRM Fabricators. They're the stainless steel guys. What a great experience. These guys are some of the top notch service, out of all of them, they're the top notch service companies around. Uh, they did our stainless steel lifelines halfway up to the shrouds so we could mount the stainless steel kayak holders that they built. They built the stainless steel uh, life raft holder. They built the uh, scuba tank holders out of some Teflon plastic type stuff. It's really great job recommend these guys just can't say good enough about them best service company i've worked with here in south florida jack tell me what you're doing i'm raising the dinghy raising the dinghy keith set up this block and tackle system to make it easier to raise and lower the dinghy so the kids can pretty much do it by themselves yeah can you push it Then tell me what we do with it when we're underway. Aren't we going to hook it up to those eyes? What eyes? This little dilsip there? Yeah. Keep it like this. We'll keep the dinghy here when we're just out cruising around, but if we're under passage, we'll probably stow it on the top deck. So my bathroom had been smelling really bad for days and we just couldn't figure out why. The holding tank was empty. Um, Keith actually took the toilet apart and cleaned everything. He checked all the hoses to make sure there were no leaks anywhere. He even bleached under the toilet, all around everything, replaced parts. We even checked under the ceiling to see if there was mold or mildew up under there anywhere, and there wasn't. And we were just completely baffled until we finally realized that that smell was coming from my son Jack's toilet up in the captain's peak in his room. So we give, gave that a really good cleaning and our problem was solved. Okay, so I had to change a fresh water water pump. The quick connect's real easy, just disconnect them. Clip the wires, remember where the wires go, use your iPhone to take pictures, that way you know how it all goes back together. I bought a six gallon per minute pump that matched all the specifications to replace the four and a half, I don't know if that was wise or not, water usage and all. Put it in the new one back in, rewired the switches, and uh, there's the final install, and I bought two extra water pumps just in case, so if I ever had one go down, I'd have it. All right, so there's the old Bimini. Uh, the sales guy said that Bimini would last two or three more years. Within two weeks of us getting that out on the water, the zippers all come off of it, so we had to replace that. We didn't count on it. There's American Marine and Canvas. Phil Eberson did a great job putting a new one on.
as you can see, the guys are doing a really good job. Man, the boat gets really hot without that bimini. You got to have a good bimini. The old one was Sombrella. It wasn't waterproof. It was water resistant. The new one is waterproof. So the bimini turned out real good. American Canvas did a great job. First of all, thanks for all your comments, your support, your encouragement, um, all your words of wisdom and advice. It seems like there's a lot of people out there that really want to be in our position, and um, that's one reason why we're doing this. So we could be an inspiration, and we can give you, um, just share our experiences with you, so uh, you'll know what to do and what not to do. Um, you can answer this first one. Why, some people have asked why we chose a monohull and not a catamaran. Well, we chose a monohull because my idea of sailing was always a monohull. That's what I saw on TV. That's what I grew up doing. That's what I grew up watching. Uh, and that's that's the type of sailing we, we uh, I've always saw. And obviously, if we'd have grown up in the South Pacific, we'd be in a catamaran because that's the kind of sailing that they do over there. Uh, but we like a monohull. It's a traditional. It's kind of a Columbus type thing, Viking type thing. I don't know. It's just what we chose. We could have, we looked at catamarans and it just wasn't it wasn't the style we wanted to go on. They were very nice. They're faster. They're more stable. But we wanted uh, so far we wanted the challenge of this monohull and and that's what we're doing. Well, and some of the stuff we've seen says that catamarans uh, rock a little more on on real rough seas. And we've we've right? seen that when we're out sailing, the catamarans will do this. But at the same time, when they're at port and they're at anchor, they're pretty solid. So I mean. It's just preference, not one's right over the other. The catamarans definitely have more space, and uh, but you're going to be cramped anyway. We want to. This is what we chose. This is what we got. Whether we like it or not, this is where we're at. And a lot of you are wondering what we're going to do when school starts. What about the kids' education? And um, we have always homeschooled our kids. Anna was reading at about age four. So I loved reading to her and listening to her read to me, and so we just never stopped. We just um, continued um, the next level, and, and I love learning, so I love teaching, and it's, um, it's just something we've been doing now for 11 years, and it's worked out really good. We really like the results. Our kids have been involved in lots of different programs and um, part-time schools and different things, so they're not just hermits stuck in the house all the time. Um, so, but this... this um, transition to the boat and learning at home or learning on the boat is really not going to be a big change for them. I already have the entire um, next year curriculum ready to go. Um, I probably will get it out sooner than later because we're getting kind of bored. And uh, no, Finn's saying no. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, we're going to do all the, the basics, reading, writing, math, um, history, we're going to add oceanography and marine biology and, and some other stuff that goes along with what we're doing. So it'll be um, a really good hands-on type of education, I hope. Some of you have asked what kind of training we do. And we do man overboard drills. We've done those drills constantly, teaching our kids. Each kid running a different station. Obviously, the little kids are the spotters. And our older kids, I mean, we take turns on the station, single man overboard and stuff like that. And obviously that's something we practice. Practice fire drills and a lot of safety stuff. Every one of our kids, we all have life jackets. Uh, we all have the the dock line, uh, the jack lines. We, we have all the safety stuff and we use that safety stuff. Uh, we have rules for our children on the boat. Uh, as far as safety goes, we don't allow, uh, we don't allow any, of our, uh, any of our kids to be on the top deck when we're on underway in bad weather or big seas without a life jacket, the two little ones, if they're on, if they're out of the cockpit, they got to have their life jacket on all the time. Uh, if they're in the cockpit or if they're out of the galley or up the stairs out of the salon, they got to have their life jacket on. At night on passages, our rules are going to be that uh, no one goes on the top deck out of the cockpit without a jack line and uh, without their obviously their life vests on and without another person being on deck so in case they did fall over there's a way to get them back in because it doesn't do no good to be tied on and you drown beside the boat dragging across the water uh, so those, those are just some of the safety things we, we, we talk about and, and we manage uh, we're going to give you all a tour of the boat and show you the things we've done the modifications uh, 
We're going to clean the boat first and then give you a tour. Yeah, Renee can't stand the inside of the boat. No, being and that's really not true because I've lived so many years with a big house for entertaining people and making sure everything is clean and the beds are made every morning and everybody's stuff is picked up. And, you know, now that I'm in my mid-40s, I don't have OCD quite so much. So out here, I really don't care if it's kind of messy. I don't care if the bed's not made. I don't make the bed every day. I'm just saying, it's not that important to me anymore. I spent a lot of years being concerned about what other people think of my house. And um, <laughs> and I guess now, it, it just It still matter. matters. Don't believe her. Uh, it doesn't matter as much. I do want things to be tidy and clean and organized. That way we can find stuff and we're not tripping over everything. But there's just certain things that I've, I feel like I've uh, wasted a lot of time being concerned with over the years. And I think that's about it. Oh, we had our first we had our first fan stop by here on the New River and yeah. say hi to us. He's been watching our videos. He says, "Hey, you guys! I know you guys. You're on YouTube. They're we watch from all Cuba. They're from Cuba. They yeah. watch all our videos, and and you know they may be able to use our boat to get back to Cuba. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we may give them the boat and go back to the ranch. I don't know. But yeah, you know, they're a really nice couple, and uh, we just want to say thank you to them for stopping by. So that's all I got. That's all I got this time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Join in next time when our weekend adventure gets really crazy and really fast. Later.